I stepped up onto the stage, um, saw the attacker um, try to get into Zeldin's face and then swing, and I could see what looked like a, a, a razor knife of some sort uh, as the congressman saw him block that um, swing. And then as he attempted another swing, I tackled the attacker from the back and um, slammed him to the ground where uh, several of us were able to restrain him, get the weapon away from him, and uh, eventually turn him over to police when they arrived. It was clear, you know, spent some time with this gentleman uh, on the ground last night, and he was not in a, a good place. Uh, very concerned. Look, I appreciate the compassion because he did serve in Iraq, but the guy attacked Lee Zeldin. You see him walk on stage. The weapon he had was a legitimate weapon, could have cut anybody right open. It's a brass knuckle, put two fingers through, two huge blades on the side. Joining me now to bring more uh, more firsthand account to this is Lee Zeldin himself. He's got the, good, the Republican nomination to be the next governor of the state of New York, and in a speech about bail reform and the, the the whole push in New York to let everybody out of prison, he gets attacked on stage. Uh, Congressman, welcome back. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing well. It's good to be with you. And uh, thankfully, there were a bunch of people on site, attendees at the rally who instinctively all jumped on this guy and tackled him. Law enforcement was there within minutes. Uh, what was crazy was that because of New York's cashless bail law, the attacker was immediately released back out onto the streets uh, this morning. I, because today I have rallies going on all day today. Tomorrow, Sunday, I just finished my first rally. Security, law enforcement presence increased. That's good. Uh, but, yeah, last night that was pretty nuts. And as anyone out there, I don't care whether you're right, center, left, Whatever your party is, your ideology, it doesn't matter. In this country, we settle our scores, the ballot box, not through political violence. And uh, it was just a, a sad sight, obviously, from uh, my vantage point. It was a little bit hairier than uh, some of the other people that watched what happened. And uh, it could have been a lot worse. So thankfully, a lot of people stepped in and, and subdued the attacker. And uh, th that, uh, again, it, it could have been a lot worse. How do you describe the weapon he had? He, he had a, a weapon that had two holes for uh, the, for him to put his fingers through, uh, kind of like as you see with these brass knuckles. There were two sharp, uh, pointy edges coming out of that weapon, and he was saying, you're done, and he lunged for me towards my neck area. I quickly grabbed his wrist and held it tight. And you know, when I had my first debate of the Republican primary that just finished, one of the questions they asked me was, uh, do you tell us something that the audience may not know about you? And I gave it a thought for a second. I said, well, I'm a black belt. I once won the world championships in sparring. Uh, when you know, at that moment, when he was coming at me, it was just, it was a simple move. I just grabbed his wrist in a particular way to hold it there. And it was only for a few moments that was necessary for a bunch of people to uh, to tackle him, uh, but I, you know, once I saw that weapon, I heard him saying "You're done," and he, he started lunging at me. Then I realized that you know this isn't somebody coming on stage to check the microphone. Congressman uh, Zeldin talking about being attacked last night. Congressman, as someone walks up to you and they get close, you could see that he was a veteran, or it was pretty apparent to the other M vets there he was a veteran. So, were you thinking maybe I'll let my guard down a little? I'm in front of a friendly audience. And these are veterans, and they can appreciate that you served in the military, too. Is that why one of the reasons why he was able to get so close, do you think, to you, and maybe you weren't that concerned originally? That is such a great question. And, you know, when I noticed the hat that he was wearing that showed that he was a veteran was right around the same time that I was also realizing just from the, the rest of the situation, words, action, weapon in the hand, uh, I also realized that I needed to put my guard up. So when I see a veteran, my my guard goes further down than whenever it was before I noticed it. Uh, but what was interesting in this moment was that I noticed that he was a veteran or at least wearing that, that veteran hat at the same time that I was getting the other signals that something wasn't right. Uh, so when did, uh, so how do you feel about him being out on the streets today? I have a huge problem with New York's Castles bail law. We see these stories time and again. This attacker should not have been released instantly. 
And I could give multiple reasons for it. And we have stories, by the way, in New York where people get released on cash or spell and go out and commit murder. There's 93-year-old Connie Torrey in Syracuse murdered by somebody released on cash or spell. There was a guy who was released on cash or spell for an arson who was then immediately rearrested for a double manslaughter. I've long been calling for a repeal of cash or spell. When Kathy Hochul was asked about this a few months ago, she said, there's no data to support it. Well, you need data. Look at the press clippings. I mean, you can look what happened last night. You can attack. You could try to stab a member of Congress, which is bad enough if you're trying to stab anybody. And you can instantly be released on Castle Spell. There was a story out of New York City a couple weeks ago where there was two Mexican cartel drug smugglers busted with $1.2 million worth of crystal meth, instantly uh, released back out on the streets due to New York's cashless bail law. So I, I have a big problem with this law uh, where we should allow so judges does, to weigh yeah. dangerousness and flight risk. And, and so and good news is so does the mayor, uh, who's a Democrat. Lastly, Nick Langworthy, who's the New York GOP chair, came out and says, Kathy Hochul fanned the flames of hate by directing supporters to your rally schedule. He says it's unacceptable conduct for anyone. Do you feel just uh, as angry about that as Langworthy apparently does? Yeah, and I'll tell you, this this is a long time coming because of what happened with Maxine Waters a few years ago, who is the chair of the House Financial Services Committee I serve on, encouraging people to confront Trump administration officials and supporters at restaurants and elsewhere. The Steve Scalise shooting hit very close to home for me. I was serving in the House uh, with, with everybody at that time and, and with the Capitol Police officers who were attacked. So I am uh, far more sensitive to this point now, I believe that nobody uh, should, I don't care what kind of a rally you're going, whether you're going to a rally to support a Republican candidate or a Democratic candidate or a third party, nobody should be trying to settle that score through political violence. These political Mm -hmm. events, there should be room for debate and disagreement, but not violence. Governor Zeldin, have a safe day today, a successful day today. Uh, In case people don't know, listen around the country. First Republican to have a legitimate shot at that office since George Pataki held it. Um, Good luck the rest of the way. New York needs you to win. Thank you. Go get him. Congressman Lee Zeldin, back in a moment. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.